Okay, this is part two of our lessons on random numbers. And before I start today's main idea, let's finish up and take up the last homework question right here. This is a good one that I usually put on the test or something like it. So it says to write a program which will determine how many times a toss of 100 coins contains 47 heads if the experiment is performed 50 times. Whoa, a lot of different ideas going on here. So we're actually going to play this game 50 times. That's the first thing you have to sort of like tear apart out of that sentence. And then as you're playing this game 50 times, so let's say it's game number one, all right, of 50. Now what you do is you throw up in the air 100 coins. Whoa, that's going to be a lot of statements, but maybe we can figure it out a, a faster way. Let's take a look at how we're going to do this. So I'm in the program we used yesterday in the last lesson to do all the, the questions. And I, like I did last one, I copy and pasted this one and I put it into number three here. Now I've already got it set up. So remember, we're going to be tossing coins. So I'm going to have a variable called coin. I'm going to start it off at zero. All I'm really worried about is the heads. So I don't really worry about anything else, just the heads, not the tails. And the last thing is there's a special value I'm going to need called heads 47 because I want to keep track of exactly when I get exactly 47 heads. Okay, now, like we always do, we pick a random number generator to start us off. And like I said, the first thing I realized in this question was that we were going to play this game 50 times. Now, what we have to do is toss coins. Okay, so basically what happens when you toss a coin is you go coin equals and uh, it's going to be r dot next and coins one and two no it's one and three so then what you do is uh oh i gotta do this a hundred times because i gotta toss a hundred coins that's gonna be bad it's gotta be a better way yeah what you have to do is another loop all right so it's gonna be like a loop inside a loop so now i'm gonna say for integer toss equals one toss less than or equal to a hundred toss plus plus and then squiggly squiggly so in there so instead of me writing down a hundred lines of the, this coin 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 and just have a whole bunch of them what I'm gonna do is just have it loop in here so it saves me a hundred lines actually by doing this for loop all right now what am I gonna do here well, I'm gonna say coin equals r dot next one comma three. That's how you pick numbers between one and three. Now, if the coin that I tossed equals one, to me, that's magic. That's the one that I want. I'm going to call that the heads, right? And I'm going to say heads equals heads plus one. Okay? It could be a two also, but I don't care about that one. So if it's a two, forget it. Don't count it. Don't do nothing with it. Now, eventually when you're done doing this a hundred times so from here to here now the computer's going to be in here for a few minutes plugging away checking the things figuring out if it's ahead if it is counting it when we're totally done that so i put myself outside of this thing so i go down i go like this if heads equals exactly 47 that's another special event Okay, and I'm going to use that squiggly line stuff, and I'm going to say heads 47 equals heads 47 plus 1. That's a special event that I need to keep track of. That's the event that happened. Now, I don't know. Is it ever going to happen? Oh, it might happen once or twice. I don't know. But if you get exactly 47 heads, I want to know about it. Now, we're done one game. So, you see how this is the loop for the game, or this experiment that I called it? Now we got to go back up and start the game again. Because it's game number two. Then we're going to do it again, game number three. The only problem is, see this counter here? The computer is going to remember it from the last question. So if we don't put this counter back to zero, it's going to like keep that answer. So we'll never get 47 again because it, it'll go up higher and higher and higher. So right around here, after I'm done one complete game, I'm going to say heads equals zero. Now, I don't say heads 47 equals zero, because that's the counter for the entire 50 experiments. So I don't want to reset that. But for each separate experiment, I want to reset that one back to zero. And that's how you answer this question. Let's take a look at if there actually is any events that would happen 47 times. Five times. Okay, let's try it again. 
three times. So it does happen. It's not like it's something that's going to happen a lot, but it happens every once in a while. Oh, didn't happen once that time. That's interesting. Happened there four times. Now, the fancy word for what we're learning is called actually computer simulations. And there's two kinds of computer simulations you can do. You can do the kind we're doing uh, called probabilistic. Like you ever heard of that word probability? That means like chances of things happening. That's the kind of simulations we're doing. They're, they're pretty easy and they're pretty straightforward. Another kind, if you get really good at computers and you know your physics and your, your math, like your trig and all that kind of stuff, is another one called a deterministic model. That's where they simulate cars crashing and if the bumper will resist the crash or if you have a jet shooting a, a, uh, something at a, a, like a missile at something and it plots the way it's moving, that kind of stuff involves physics. And so if you're really good at physics, you can simulate those and then obviously do them graphically. Now in grade 10, we're not, we're not good enough yet to do that kind of stuff. You don't know enough math and enough science. So we're sticking with probabilistic, but that's what we're kind of doing for the next couple of days. Okay, now. We're going to take a look at some other problems today. Just other examples of how you can use uh, C sharp and random numbers to simulate all kinds of stuff. And we're going to look at these problems here and do them on the computer. Okay, now this program and actually all the answers for these ones except the last one are on the computer. And uh, I'm going to pop it up right now. This is a simple coin toss problem and let's give them a run. So this first one here called the coin toss basically. I'm uh, tossing coins and when I get three heads, I'm gonna mark them. So it's almost like the one we just did. We were worried about getting 47 heads. This one here, what I do when I display it, I put a little asterisk on it when we get the one with three heads. Okay, so let me just quickly show you that one. It's basically like the one we just did. It's got the, the double loop again. So I'm gonna do, uh, I'm looking for three heads. That's my special situation this time. I start my experiments, they go from 1 to 50, so it's exactly like what I just showed you guys a few minutes ago. I start my counters off at 0, and then in this inside loop, that's where all the action happens, I toss 4 coins. And again, the other way would have been to write down this kind of line 4 times, okay? Or the one we did before, we would have had to write it down 100 times, crazy, you don't do that, you do it in a loop, okay? If we get a 1, I count it. And what this is doing is attaching letters together. That's what makes it look kind of cool when you print it out. Again, like the last one, this is the special situation. If I get that, I'm going to count it. Now notice this counter, I don't put it back to zero. I only put the, the regular counters back to zero. Okay, so that's just a quick like, review of almost the same question we just took up as the beginning homework uh, question. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Next one is, let's do a simulation. This one's kind of cool. Um, where when you roll two dice, I want the words to come out. So if you roll a one and a two, I actually want the word one and two to come out, and then you get three. Okay, so let's do that program, and we'll give it a run. Okay, so dice problem. So look, six and two is eight. Six and five is 11. That's kind of cool, right? So you're doing a dice roll game now where you're showing the numbers. Now how do you do this? Well, you, you might not like it, but it's arrays, okay? Those arrays, you can't run away from them. Remember, we only spent a couple days on them, but I told you, every topic we do, you're gonna see them again, and again, and again, and again. So let's show, I'm gonna show you how I did this one. With this one, what I did is I, I have an array here at the top, and I initialized it. This is kind of a cool way to do it all in one line. All right, so you say string array, like I showed you, and there's the words. I never like using array zero, so that's why you see nothing there, two quotes together. This is array one, which is a one, okay? And the actual name of the array is dice words, so this is actually dice words one with the square brackets, okay? Now the reason I did that is when you roll these dice, when I get a one, the number one, I'm gonna put it in the square bracket, and then it's gonna say the word. Now watch what I'm saying. See this little loop here that goes from 1 to 20? We're playing this game 20 times. We're going to roll two dice. We're going to add them up. So right now, this is all pure number, number, number. Then what I'm going to do is, see that, which is a, let's pretend I got a, a 3 on that. That's going to go right inside the square bracket. And the computer's going to go dice words 3. So it's going to go up here, 
That's what dice words three is, the actual word three. And then if I roll a four for the next one, there'll be the number four in there, but this whole thing will go upstairs and it'll print out the word four, okay? And then the last one will be sum. Now, the sum was done right here as a pure number, three and four is seven. So this would say seven here, and then it would go up here and pull out the word seven. So it's kind of neat how you can use arrays to print out information. Okay, last one. And again, you're not gonna like the last one because it's gonna need arrays, but that's important. Arrays are important. Okay, the last one is like my showstopper I did in class one day. You know when we're saying that you wanna keep track of how many people got a 70% and an 80% and it would take like hundreds of lines? This is kind of like the same idea. I wanna roll dice, right? and I'm gonna roll them 15 times. And what I wanna do is tell me, I want you to tell me how many times when you rolled the dice, you got uh, whatever, okay? So uh, in this particular one, we're gonna have it roll dice, and I wanna know how many times you rolled a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five, and a six. Now, it would involve a lot of if statements and counters. We're gonna do it with what's called an array counter, okay? So here is the actual solution, and it's in this program again. We'll give it a run first. Okay, so I roll the dice an X amount of times, 100 times, and then each time I write down how many times that number occurred. All right, let me show you the code. Now this one is very short, it's one line. Instead of this one line, if you didn't know how to do it with arrays, it would have taken you, uh, well, there's six possibilities and then two lines for each one, it would have been at least 12 lines or more, okay? So here is the most important line. You're going to make an array called the frequency, and it's seven, even though you're keeping track of six. Remember, it's always one more than what you think. So you play this game a hundred times, and what you do is you roll the dice, and then you have the computer count it. Now in class, I didn't write it exactly like this, so if this is kind of making you uh, not sure of what I'm trying to say, I'll do it the long way. You go frequency, square bracket, roll, equals frequency, square bracket roll plus one okay and that's called an array counter so what we've done to in this lesson today is just recap a couple of ideas and as you can see all of them end up being with loops that's the most important thing you generate random numbers and you have if statements so basically it's four loops you got your random number generating you got your if statements and some counters and there's nothing like crazy, crazy. And every once in a while, you gotta use arrays to make it more efficient, all right? Now, you would lose some marks if you did it the long, stupid way, but you would still get most of the marks. But tell you the truth, to get the full marks, you would have to do it the more efficient way. Now, to finish up, I'm not gonna take it up in this video, but what we're gonna do is give you this problem to try. Interesting game, okay? It's a gambling game, which is almost always on our tests. So it says a gambler has a choice of two games. The first costs eight bucks to play. Two dice are rolled and the player receives the sum of the two numbers rolled. So you know what that means? Let's say I got lucky sixes. Six and six is 12 bucks, great. I won $12, but you didn't really. You had eight bucks to cost to play, right? So 12 minus eight, so you actually won $4. So what you gotta do is make a little program with loops that simulates this, keeps track of your winning. So really when you win, you gotta take away eight bucks. Now there's another game. So you would do this in a separate loop, all inside the same program. This game, it costs 15 bucks to play, but what you get is the product of the numbers rolled. So if you don't know what that word product means, it means when you times them together. So let's say you get six and six again, right? But this time it's six times six, and you win $36. So really, 36, and then you take away 15, so you won 21 bucks, okay? And you keep doing this over and over again, and you play the games a thousand times and then you average out how much you win per game and you figure out which one's the best one, okay? Now we will take this up before the end of the period for that lesson, but I'm not gonna show it to you on the video. But I always like this game, it's almost always on the test. Okay, good luck.